Good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to the vlog. Um, today, we're gonna be going over a couple things as usual. Um, got this car back in the garage and I had it outside because I had the garage worked on today. So one of the issues I was having is the garage doors. Ever since the house has been built, the garage doors were always acting up. They was always having issues with them. Uh, they would bind up and almost like shake when they were going up. And I'm like, what the hell is causing this? Well, it turned out, I guess, the archways are for the door since I had, and these are eight foot doors instead of like a standard size seven foot door. Um, they were too small and it gets too tight and the doors were catching it, causing it to jerk on the way up. They changed the arch size or the arch size perfectly smooth now. No issues going up and down. Um, and another thing I wanted to do is you can see here, I've moved my, this is a cheap Harbor Freight uh, electrical socket or what would you call this? I don't even know, electrical reel? I have no idea what the technical term is. Um, but I moved it over here from being right over top of this car uh, that used to be mounted right up there by the electrical socket. Problem is, I don't have a socket next to it. So I'm gonna have to get up above the rafters here and run electrical over and mount something right here. Or it can run an extension cord for right now to make this real easy. But I just think to, to make it look clean, uh, I'm just gonna cut into the ceiling there, put another electrical outlet, which isn't gonna hurt anything, and just plug this right in. I just think it'll look nicer than trying to ghetto rig it and just running like a little extension cord. I might have to do that for now until I make some time and it's not hot out. I'd rather do it this winter when it's nice and cold and I just don't wanna be up there when it's hot. Have you guys ever done anything with it? It sucks. Also went out, got me some Earl. Always using the same stuff, Brad Penn 10W40. Uh, I believe this takes 4.1 quarts, and this big boy here, he takes six quarts. Um, but I always use Brad Penn. Uh, I always use Purelator, Purelator filters. Now, depends which ones they have there. These are all mellow inside, which I really like. Um, now, for the MR2, the last owner actually already had a filter for it, which let's find that real quick right here. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about Canaan. I got to do some research on it. There's some stuff online for them. I'm not sure if they use cardboard or if they use metal. Uh, that'll determine if I use it or not. Probably me being nitpicky because the car's so stock. Um, for the Supra, I don't, I don't take any chances. People say, well, why would you use Pure Later then? Well, these are actually nine times out of 10 is nicer, if not nicer, um, than what the factory uses. They usually have all metal inserts. So instead of using cardboard at the top and bottom of them, um, they actually use metal, which I really like. Um, and, the, and all the filtration and stuff seems to be proven really well. Um, that's just from what I've seen in the YouTube videos, kind of like this, um, just watching them from what I've seen, they seem to do really well. Got some other good news today. Travis from Beaver's Auto Body. Let me know that my bumper's and rear wing's done. So he said he'll be, be able to pick it up on Friday. He wants to let it cure a little bit. He's gonna wet sand and go over it a little bit more with a fine tooth comb to make sure all the imperfections and everything are out of it. Um, he said Friday be able to pick it up. Fine with me, it works out perfect. I'll get off work on Friday, go get my buddy's truck, swing over and get it since he's only five minutes from me, which makes this even nicer, uh, and go pick up the bumper, uh, throw everything back in. The only thing that sucks is I probably would wanna drive it uh, this weekend, but I still don't have my catch can. Now, I did finalize a design with J-Bell up at Empire Performance. Um, it's going to be a filtered style can. I'm not recirculating, I think I've talked about this. It's gonna be a little bit different. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. This is a different design, but using an, a design I've seen before. Uh, there's a little weird twist to it. Um, I'm hoping this is my last one when I'm done. Um, the first one I had, it was okay, but I was in love with it. The second one was a little bit better. I liked it, but wasn't in love with it. I'm hoping this third one I'm in love with and I'm not getting another one for a while. Uh, I have been getting a new one every year, but I think it's time for me to stop that trend. So some people were saying like, Ryan, that lip's not that big. It's not that bad. Well, let's take a measurement here. What is it? It's about four inches. So the lip right there is about four inches I guess tall you could say it is, or it wouldn't be thick. So yeah, I guess four inches tall. Um, I think a stock one in the center is about an inch. So it's three inches lower than what a stock lip would be on this. And it makes it a pain, like with the car being lowered, and it's a real sports car. This isn't a Honda Civic, guys. So it already sits low. Um, so when you lower it, then you put a lip on it that drops another three inches. I think I measured it once. It's either three or three and a half inches sitting on a flat ground like this from hitting, um, from touching the ground, which is just insane. I do appreciate the people that have hit me up to about you know finding different lips where people are willing to switch. Um, here's the weird thing: a lot of these lips like this, this Wings West style lip, the MVP, all these places you find online, they all are like smashed in the center. Well, let me explain. Let me show you real quick. So the center piece here of the front lip is always bent in. Like for some reason, this section right here of the lip is always like curved in under the bumper. And everyone I talk to, every one I see, I always the first thing I go look at them if they have this lip, they're always like bent in. For some reason, I don't know why, maybe it's because I personally, like this lip didn't come with any holes drilled in it. I personally drilled the holes in it. Mine does not like yank under like that. Mine sticks out like it should, doesn't have any of those issues. So people are like, would you trade? And I'm like, yes, that's a good idea because I can get a new lip. But at the same time, if I ever want to switch back, I feel like I'm going to regret it. 
because I'm never going to be able to get one that actually fits right, and it doesn't really go bad. It's urethane, so it should last me forever. And I'm like, do I want to trade it for something else? Do I just keep it and just have it as a backup and fix it one day? Because here's another part of the reason why I wanted it sold in a way. Um, it's not perfect. So, I mean, this is an old school lip, so you had to cut the wings off. And it's a little jagged. It's nothing if you look here. I mean, okay, maybe I'm being a little bitch. Can, you really can't even tell. But it's a little jagged here. Um, once you mount it to the bumper, too, you really can't see any of it. But I want it to be perfect. With the front bumper being painted and the updates this guy's giving me, and he's taking all his time. I want it to look good. Um, maybe I'm just being a little bitch. You guys, leave, let me know in the comments. Am I being a bitch or am I not being a bitch? Let that be the debate. The <sighs> All right, guys. Now to the section of this video that you probably clicked on this for in the first place. Don't mind the shirt. Don't mind the ice cold Keystone. I don't even watch football, to be honest. My wife is from Baltimore. She's a huge Ravens fan. Uh, so don't judge me on the football team. because I don't even really watch football because I really just don't care about cars or life. Anyways, on to the subject now. Let's get to this. The whole reason you guys probably clicked on this video was the fact of talking about Chinese made and getting ripped off from people and knocking off other people's parts. It just, it blew my mind the other day. I talked about this a little bit in the last video, but I wanted to go into a little bit more detail. So here's the thing. The other day, I have a company that's willing to give me a product to show how to install it, go over it, etc. Fantastic. Looking forward to it. I'm very excited. Um, I posted about it earlier that week on one of the Facebook pages showed this item up on the board saying hey look at this does anyone use this it looks like a great little item i wish it would have came up with it oh so not even 30 minutes like into the post being there i see someone post down below going great thanks for posting a picture now i can rip this off and make it myself maybe we can sell it for eight dollars i think the part sells for like 90 originally he said i could probably make this for eight bucks and sell it to people for 20. thanks for sending or posting this really you motherfucker this is this is exactly what and this exact person too i literally saw them the day before bitching about like trump's america china this isn't supposed to be political either don't i'm not liberal democrat whatever but saying like this is trump's america the blah 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 china 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 you're literally doing what you're bitching about you fucking idiot that's literally what you're bitching about and then you're gonna go and do it dude here's you here's the point right over your head like you moron like this is the kind of stuff that makes me mad. I, I get it when someone says, or they replicate a part that's no longer made. You know, there's a lot of stuff from the Japanese companies that I like for, say, the Super here. The company stopped making, they said they're not profitable. And American companies like, you know what, we can replicate this. And everyone's like, why not? They're not willing to do it anymore. We've asked them to make it and they won't do it. So if you can replicate it, fantastic. But if there's a company making that product and you make an exact copy of it, you're a piece of shit. Like seriously, you're straight up a piece of shit for knocking them off. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm all about competition. I'm all about capitalism. Uh, I strongly believe in it. Uh, but, you know, there's everything has a fine line, you know. People like to say we need 100% capitalism. Then if you say that, then you also guess you don't believe in school systems because technically the school systems we have today are free, quote unquote free. You pay with it your taxes, which is a socialist, socialistic way of getting it paid for. So you, there's a fine line you always have to walk. But with all that being said, you know, in the car world, we don't have that. You shouldn't be doing that. You know, if I buy something for my car, like the front lip came from MVP Motorsports, exhaust came straight from HKS, the manifold came from JDL Auto Design. And once again, I can't deny it. I've bought parts from Japan, or not Japan, but from China. I buy stuff from there all the time, you know. Uh, like some of the nuts and bolts off my car are like the dress up bolts and stuff I bought up there. Uh, but I guess who would be the only company? I don't think there's a company that makes like a dress up kit for the Supra, so I just bought some random nuts and bolts offline uh, from them and just built my own little kit. So that's, I mean, I guess it's not the same thing because it's not really staying, I'm just buying bolts and whatnot. Uh, but I just hate when someone tries to openly rip somebody off because you weren't smart enough to come up with the idea. You have to go, you know what, I can undercut that guy now. And it happens all the time, you know, manifold. This has been a big issue in the manifold world for years and years and years. Exhaust has been a big issue. I remember when 2JZ manifolds for like full race came out and everyone just started knocking off the full race manifold. Everyone started copying it. They did the first one where they put the runner right up in front of the manifold and put the wastegate right up front. Everyone and your brother. I remember the first big deal was DOC race. Blatantly, I mean, literally looks the same, ripped it off. Nowadays, no one cares and full race really isn't big into the 2JZ world like it used to be. Um, but it just kind of like, it makes me laugh that people are like, this isn't a big deal. I don't see what the problem is. I'm like, bro, you're literally openly ripping these companies off, doing it in no, and you're the same people that I see post and say like, we need to keep by American. This needs to be perfect. Then quit acting like the Chinese counterparts that you hate so much. Quit being a hypocrite. Quit going down that same path. So sorry for the rant. I guess it's kind of rambling on here, but 
It just makes me angry that there's these companies out there that are openly ripping others off here in the US, not somewhere outside the country. Here in the good old USA, ripping off other USA ma manufacturers. Guys, what are you doing? Come up with your own ideas. If you can't do it, then you shouldn't be in business. I mean, I'm all for manufacturing. I'm all for you know doing something better. But if you're not making a better product and you can't make anything better, then you're not a new company. You're just another fucking schmuck, another sham out there trying to you know ride someone else's coattails. That shit just, oh, that just irks me to no end. Um, I guess if you're buying the licensing or you have the copyrights to it, once again, completely fine. But these companies obviously aren't doing that. They're just saying, you know what? We'll maybe we'll make it a little different. And you know, oh, it's not just like yours, but it is. I mean. I don't know. That's my opinion, guys. You gotta let me know in the comments below. What do you think of these companies that do this? What do you think of these guys that go out there and go, you know what? I see that. I can, I can rip that off. I can make an exact copy and sell it for way cheaper, but I don't have to put the engineering time in it because I'll just say, I'll just buy their part, mimic exactly what they did, change one little minor thing, go, oh, it's mine, not yours, and then undercut the guy that took all the time for all the engineering, all the headache, all, all the money that's invested, and just undercut that guy. What do you guys think of that? I want to know your opinions. All right, guys, thank you very much as usual. I appreciate you all chiming in and watching the videos. Um, I got some cool stuff coming in here. I'm really, really, really excited. I'm excited for Friday to get the bumpers and everything done. I think Super's gonna look way nicer. I can't wait to see the wing and bumpers since everything's gonna be shaved and smooth. Still gotta decide on that front lip, which is, I wish someone would replicate the stock front lip. I'm not gonna buy one from Toyota for 450 bucks and it's gonna break because of junk. They're just so crappily made. Um, so if you guys have any ideas out there, let me know. I've seen the whiff bits one. I like it, but I hate how the front lip comes down and kind of swoops out. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, appreciate it as usual. Go check out my Facebook and Instagram down in the description below. Also check out my boy Cody's channel. He's helped me out all the time making these videos. Thank you guys very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace!